Hi everyone, in the previous lecture we discussed about the IPv4, the important concepts and its functions and in today's lecture we are going to discuss about the OSPF routing protocol, the major concepts and its functionality. In getting introduced about this OSPF routing protocol, in today's lecture we will see about the agenda that is the overview of OSPF and then later with the link state routing protocol and then we look into the working principle of the OSPF and then with the types of links that is available in OSPF and in later session we will discuss about the routing protocol pack. Now we will look into the overview of this OSPF routing protocol. Before getting into the concepts we will find the difference between what is routing and what is forwarding. Routing is nothing but building of the maps and we also have to find the difference between what is routing protocol with that of the routing algorithm. Routing protocol specifies the choice of the routers or how the routers are getting communicated in the network. Whereas routing algorithm determines the specific choice of the routers in the network. And these routing protocol populate the forwarding table. And now forwarding is the process of passing the packets from one hop to the other hop in the network. And now the forwarding table contains about the best path that is required to forward the packets from one hop to the other hop in the network. And there is always that only one forwarding table should be available in that network. Now we are looking to the overview of this OSPF. This OSPF was developed in the year 1991 by the IETF that is the Internet Engineering Task Force. And this is purely developed for the TCP IP environment and this uses the link state routing protocol which also in turn uses the shortest path first technology and wherein all the routers work within one autonomous systems and this routing protocol is otherwise called to be as the dynamic routing one which detects the topological changes within the autonomous systems for a particular period of time. And this also has the feature of fast convergence with route authentication. Now we will look into the link state routing protocol. Before going for the link state routing protocol, we have to know about the problems of the distance vector that leads to the proposal of the link state routing protocol. The problems of the DV protocol is that which is very slow convergence and count to the infinity problem and has a slow response to the topological changes as well as large data packet updates. Because of these problems, the link state routing protocol has come into an existence. And this uses the Bellman Ford algorithm and this set of routing protocol is well defined to work in a very smaller system. And now we look into the link state routing. Here in link state routing, each router is said to have a database. A database will contain information about the whole topology that is about the link and its corresponding state. And all the routers will contain the same information and if there are any changes in the link states that are flooded across the network and this set of link state routing constructs its own best path to every destination upon network failures and this link state routing also constructs the link state packets that is called as LSPs which is used for routing in the network. An OSPF area, getting introduced to an OSPF area is that the OSPF network is divided into a small subdomain called as area and every area has its own area identification. An area is the logical connection of OSPF networks the routers and the links that have the same information about the area identification. Area limits to the scope of the route information as well as to the route to get propagated and these type of areas 
all the network in a specific area needs to get connected and the border in which the area of a network is called as a border area router and this contains information about the data that needs to get communicated to the other areas in the network and there is a backbone area which determines the subset of all the areas into a subdomain and this is called or acting as a hub which is meant for the distribution of data from one area to another area in the network. Now we we'll look into the working principle of the OSPF. All the routers contain or maintain a database and all the routers have the same identical databases and the routers distribute the local state information through the AS by flooding and all the routers have the same amount of data that needs to get transmitted. All routers execute the same algorithm in parallel and each router constructs a tree. We call this as the shortest path tree by using the Digistrux algorithm. This shortest path tree helps the AS in determining the destination nodes in the network. In continuation with the working principle of the OSPF, when a router starts, it first initializes its routing protocol data structure. The OSPF uses the handshaking, the hello messages to know all its neighborhood nodes. The mere router is called to be as the adjacency router or the peer router is called to be as the adjacency routers in the network. The router exchanges the information about the knowledge of the domain that it is considered and this information is called as the database description and this information is placed in the LSA messages where LSA messages are called as link state advertisement messages. Upon receiving the LSA messages, the receiving router checks its LST is consistent with its peer database. If it is consistent, the peer database is said to be fully adjacency. The router periodically advertises the link state information to all its neighboring nodes. If it is consistent, it is said to be an adjacency node with its information. From this database, the router calculates the shortest tree for itself to route the data packets. This shortest tree in turn yields the routing table for the protocol. Now we we'll look into the types of links in OSPF. There are four types of link in OSPF. The first one is the point to point link. The second one is the transient link. The third one is the stub link and the fourth one is the virtual link. When we talk about the point to point link, this is a dedicated link between two devices that are connected to each other and there are two routers that are connected without any host and in this point to point link there is no need of addressing that is there is no need of network addressing also. Now we will talk about the transient link. This type of transient link uses many routers so this routers will have so many number of neighbors and the data can be entered and the data can be retrieved through many routers. Now we look about the stub link. The stub link is the one that is connected to only one router and there is only one direction or one path where the data can be passed into it and the data can be entered or retrieved only through the one router. Now we talk about the virtual link. When a link between two routers are disconnected or broken, the admin creates a virtual link. There are several routers that uses the virtual link to route the data packets in the network. Now the picture depicts the types of links that is used in the OSPF. As we discussed, we, the picture tells about the point to point link and also about the transient and the stub links used. Now we discuss about the OSPF routing protocol packets. There are five types of packets involved in it. The first one is the hello packets followed by the database description packets and next one is the LSR request packets and followed by the LSU and the last one is the LSA acknowledgement packets. 
Now, when we are discussing about the hello packets, the OSPF handshaking hello messages are used to know about the adjacency of its neighboring nodes. Then we discuss about the database description packets that tells about the content of the link state routing protocol of every router that is involved in routing. Then we talk about the LSR that is a request packet requesting the specific or a small information about an OSPF router. Then the LSU packets are the one that transports the uh, link state advertisement packets to its routing table. And the last one is the acknowledgement packet. Upon receiving a packet, the proper nodes are getting acknowledged to its neighbors. So these are the packets that are involved in the OSPF. And now we summarize about the whole of the OSPF that we discussed. In the earlier slide, we discussed about what is routing and what is forwarding and the difference between the both. Along with that, we also differentiated about the routing protocol along with the routing algorithm. And later we discussed about the basics of OSPF followed by the link state routing, why there is a need for a link state routing and wherein the disadvantages of the DSP or the distance vector routing protocol paved a wave or a paved a path for this link state routing protocol. And later we discussed about the working principle of the OSPF and its functions. And also we discussed about the types of links in OSPF as four different types. And then we discussed about the importance of OSPF and its functionalities along with its importance. We have come to the end of the session. Hope everyone understood the basic concepts of OSPF and in the next lecture we are going to discuss about IRGP and EIRGP routing protocol. Thank you.